Please join in singing our opening hymn, Come Back to Me. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. And friends, thank you so much for tuning in to this celebration of the Holy Mass on Ash Wednesday, being celebrated here at the Cathedral of St. Peter in Chains in Peterborough. As we embark upon these 40 days of Lent, we pray that this coming season may be a time of prayer and penance, of spiritual growth, and of true charity to our neighbor. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up a battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows? whether the Lord will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering to be presented to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, Gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity 
on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our responsorial psalm. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. joy of your help with a spirit of fervor sustain me oh lord open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise be A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, at an acceptable time, 
I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before people in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Somebody has remarked that it seems strange to be starting the season of Lent when it feels like Lent last year never really ended. And of course, we barely got into Lent 2020 when the realities of COVID-19 and pandemic restrictions and social distancing hit us full force. And it's true that we've, we've never fully come out of it, and it looks like we won't for some months still. So it's been a year of uh, deprivations and limits and change of familiar habits. For Christians, uh, one of the greatest sacrifices has been the inability to gather as we normally would in our churches for prayer and the celebration of the sacraments. We've had to deal with capacity limits and near total shutdown, and individuals have often had to make decisions about their ability to participate in public worship, especially if their health is compromised in any way. Now, I'm very happy that we've been able to return recently to 30% capacity in our churches just in time for the season of Lent. And still, I'm also happy that we continue to broadcast this Mass from our cathedral and that many parishes are, are live streaming and recording Masses for the benefit of those who aren't able to attend in person. Yes, it does rather feel like we've had a 12-month long Lent already, but maybe not entirely. I mean, for one thing, uh, waistlines in COVID 
have apparently been expanding with people stuck at home and getting more creative in their cooking and their baking, I dare say. And let it be said that not every deprivation automatically leads to a, a penitential spirit or to a, a greater spiritual depth. And Lent is fundamentally supposed to be about those things, not about running through a, a checklist of sacrifices and tasks. Now, in this famous passage from Matthew's Gospel, uh, while our Lord kind of goes through a checklist, he speaks about three customary devotional practices within Judaism, fasting, and prayer, and almsgiving. And we know that, that Jesus himself fasted and prayed and gave alms because the scriptures tell us that. And yet he speaks very little about these practices themselves. Rather, he's focused on the proper spirit that a person should have when fasting, praying, or giving alms. And we would do well to listen to him. The whole point is not to make a, an ostentatious show of these things, but to do them quietly, humbly, and sincerely. And your father, Jesus says, who sees all that is done in secret, your father will reward you. So this Lent, what we do should be different. It's about doing things with, with heart and intention and a desire to grow in faith and love in the image of Jesus himself. It's not just about enduring the same treadmill that we've been on for the past 12 months because uh, after all, we can't get off it soon anyway. But what if this, this second Lent in COVID times would be an invitation for us to go a little deeper in our faith, not just to add up prayers, but to pray to God more personally, to ask for God's guidance in our lives so that his will might truly be done in us and through us. And not just to shed those extra COVID pounds, but to fast in a way that impresses upon us our absolute dependence on God, our need for God, and to practice almsgiving, charity, and fraternity in a manner that reveals that we are all the children of God. Well, as Pope Francis has uh, noted in his encyclical Fratelli Tutti, uh, this pandemic has revealed to us you know, more than ever the fact that we are a global community, brothers and sisters of one another. Let's be more conscious of that. These are all ways that we could enter into the very heart of Lent, ways that will change us and bring us closer to Almighty God. Well, I'm reminded of the story about an elderly woman who was admitted to the hospital, and the admitting nurse asked her, uh, has your diet changed recently? And she responded, well, yes. For Lent, I gave up whipped cream on my jello and hard candy and my two beers a night, and look where it's got me. <laughs> so where is Lent 2021 going to get us? If it's only to drop a few pounds or to drop some uncomfortable habit, maybe not far enough. But if we approach it in the right spirit, it could be a time of, of spiritual growth, of repentance, of deeper faith, hope, and love, indeed, a time to do as the prophet Joel says, to return to the Lord with all our hearts. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, 
they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Trusting in the Lord's mercy, let us bring before him our prayers and petitions for ourselves and for the world. For the church throughout the world, May the Lord lead us into a deeper conversion of heart through the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who govern, may the Spirit guide them in their decision-making for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For children throughout the world, especially those who are in need of food, shelter, and care, may the Lord protect and guard them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all members of this faith community, those gathered here and those watching at home, may the Lord help us persevere in our Lenten commitments in the face of distractions and temptations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those suffering with COVID-19, for those who care for them, for their families and our communities, let us ask for God's healing grace. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the faithful departed, may the Lord's perpetual light shine upon them and bring them everlasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these prayers we bring before you, O Lord, and answer them in accordance with your merciful and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace of your name, for all his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. Dear friends, united in faith, let us join together in the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Thank you for tuning in today, dear friends, and for your prayerful participation in this Mass. And may this season of Lent indeed be a sacred time of blessing for each and every one of us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in singing, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. <laughs> 